In this video, we're gonna talk about doses, a little bit of the mechanism stuff, and my experiences with Sonoforam, the awesome nootropic, coming up. Fast forward two minutes if you want to get right to the content. You're not going to hurt my feelings, but I don't want to do you an injustice. So four powerful nootropic products that we have put out to the market in response to the market's request. First of all, folks said, look, can you create a stack that's discernible? That was the chief complaint. None of the pre-made stacks are very powerful. We solved that problem. We created a stack called Cortex, very powerful, comparable to modafinil in people's eyes. Get it at livecortex.com. The Cortex stack's being called the only pre-made stack that works. We wrote two digital pro guides on nootropics with pro power user stacks and, and also simple but very surgical stacks. To combine, I think there's 130, 140 stacks in both of these guides. One of them is called the Racetam Guide Guide, covers all the Racetam's 80 plus pro Racetam stacks, okay? You get access to pro Racetam stacks. The other one's called Smarter, Better, Faster. That's if you're one to five years into taking nootropics and or brand new. You can learn how to take them, where to get them, all about choline sources, all about some of the Racetams, all about Nupept, all about research chemicals, all about Phenibut, all about Uridine, all about ALA, all about Alcar, all about all this major stuff that folks wanna know about. Plus, advanced power user stacks. Get it at livecortex.com, Smarter, Better, Faster, and the Rastam Guide Guide are both digital guides. And then we do stack consulting. 40 minutes with me on a video chat or call. I'll help you formulate a stack. I'll answer your questions about nootropics, whatever you need to do. You know, whether you're an executive that needs extra brain performance or you're someone in medical school that needs help on formulating a stack or you're somebody new to nootropics and you need some questions answered and you need me to help formulate you a stack, tell you where to go, tell you what to get, tell you how to take it, tell you which milligram quantity, and then you need me to work with you throughout the ensuing weeks or months via email to help you refine that stack, get it at livecortex.com. It's a console, 65 bucks. Get your 40 minutes of me and 15 additional email correspondences. Okay, so son of a ram. Uh, we're gonna do a podcast about this. It's probably gonna be launching in the next day or two from September 4th onward. 2017, uh, but Sunifram is basically a, uh, you know, it's a pharmaceutical compound. It's legal to have in the United States, as far as I can tell. Uh, it is, I, I guess it isn't, it doesn't seem to be in the forefront of many nootropics uh, companies, like, you know, nootropics product rosters. It's like just not on the front page or whatever. Some folks don't have it. Some folks do have it. It is still relevant enough, but it's one of those nootropics that came around three or four years ago. Like for those of us that have been in the game for a long time, we remember Sunifram that and Unifram, it's kind of cousin. And uh, I fussed with it a long time ago and I brought it back in recently to try to, you know, remember what it was like, get some experience with it, see what I could stack with it, and then, you know, uh, provide that information to you guys. So I am back to report on my Son of Ram experiences. First of all, Son of Ram is, mechanistically, it's probably the closest thing to Son of Ram would be Nefiracetam and that it doesn't particularly bind to any receptors or modulate any receptor, you know, any receptors, but it does do a few interesting things like increase the release of acetylcholine in the prefrontal cortex. Uh, that's interesting, right? Because most other racetams or cholinergics might, might fuss with acetylcholine in different regions of the brain, like the hippocampus, or they might improve choline uptake in neurons. Well, you know, uh, sunifram and, and uniferam, as far as I can tell, foster a faster release of acetylcholine in the prefrontal cortex, right? Prefrontal cortex is where you do a lot of planning, mental coordination, these sorts of, these sorts of things. Um, uh, the dose range on sunifram is four to eight milligrams. Okay, so it's pretty potent. What, what, what really was attempted was, uh, essentially this was the chemical modification of paracetam, the, the major granddaddy of the racetam family. But you know, since it doesn't have that, it, there's, there's a chemical backbone that all the racetams have, a structure that Sonofram does not have. So it's not officially a racetam, but it's kind of like racetams. It, it was literally created as a synthetic derivative of, of, of paracetam. Uh, so it requires, but it requires, but it's very powerful. So it requires lower doses. Four to eight milligrams is the dose range on Sonoforam. Four to eight milligrams, okay? Uh, if you take it, I mean, my dose strategy, which you're gonna hear in the upcoming podcast on Sonoforam is four milligrams sublingual. You know, that's like where you wanna do the four milligram quantity, do it sublingually, put it under your tongue, let it sit for five minutes, spit it out. And then eight milligrams 
if you're going to take it orally. Take it, you know, take it in eight milligram quantities if you're going to take it orally. Uh, it does not seem to require a choline source for me, but you might be one of those people that, you know, if the brain's using up extra acetylcholine, you're gonna need to take alpha GPC, CDP choline, or choline by tartrate. You'll have to titrate accordingly. If you wanna understand choline sources as they relate to racetams or acetylcholine modulating nootropics, we explain that pretty definitively in, well, both the racetam god guide and smarter better faster. So get those guides to understand what the heck that means. Uh, but uh, essentially, that's it. Here are my experiences with Sunifram. I don't uh, notice any stimulatory, um, you know, any increases in mental energy type effects. I, I, I have, you know, mild working memory improvements when taking Son of Haram. But the standout effect for me is that it, 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 it basically gives me more mental clarity than many other nootropics out there. You know, it's like if it's in the morning and it's 9 a.m. and I drank some coffee, but my brain's just still not clear for one reason or another, we live in a toxic environment. Unless you're doing two mile runs every day and then drinking a whole lot of water, you know, your lymphatic system might not be clearing toxins quick enough and they end up in your brain and that stuff builds up over time. There's so much, it goes way beyond nootropics. Like if your colon is not clearing quick enough and fast enough, toxins can build up from byproducts of processed food products you might eat in the store and they're sitting in your colon, reabsorbing back in your body all that stuff, right? So if like I might be gunked up or my brain's sort of gunked up as a result of one thing or the other, to include dumb decisions I might make to drink like alcohol or something the day, the day before, or whatever, right? Go out and eat just a bunch of crap at a restaurant, which is all crap. <laughs> um, and I need my brain to be clear. Son of Frame really works for that. Like, it, you know, th that's the standout effect. So it gives me this this interesting mental clarity effect where things just sort of start to clear out. Again, no significant surges in mental energy, no significant other stimulatory effects, mild working memory, but clarity. Brain just clears out. Uh, that's very impressive. That's, it's very, very impressive. So that's my experience on Son of Ram. The effects are relatively short-lived for me. Okay, so I would just say for folks, who knows how it's gonna affect you, but the effects are relatively short-lived. I'm talking about an hour to an hour and a half, and then it basically is not noticeable. Uh, and the clarity feeling kind of just you know goes away. But that's okay for a freaking four to eight milligram thing. You could just dose it again. You can dose it up to four times a day. I really don't see a problem with doing that. I think you should cycle it like everything else. Uh, you know, I think uh, Sonofram is like one of the nootropic compounds that we don't have a whole lot of data on toxicity, so you want to just be careful in that regard. Cycle it three days on, a week off, three days on, uh, four days off, something like that. Uh, and then switch between that and other compounds. And look, it's still available out there on the web. It's an older school nootropic. I think there is room for it. Like I have a circular jar of Sonofram sitting in my nootropic spin. I'm certainly going to use it again. You know, at some point, I've got some Unifaram coming in, which is different, sort of a sort of a synthetic cousin, a little bit of a derivative. We're going to do a review and talk about that, discuss mechanisms and doses and strategies on that coming soon. And look for the Sunifaram podcast, which will be coming out. It's episode number thirty-two of the Cortex Labs Nootropics podcast, which is launching pretty soon, before the sixth of September, probably around the fifth. That'll expand more on my experiences with the Sunifaram. But for now, that is the data. Those are the mechanisms. That is the dose range, and that is my experience. Thanks for watching.